this sound, these chords. There is something magical about playing guitar and playing chords. And what I want to talk about today is exactly that. I feel when I started playing guitar, I was uh, quite intimidating, Im intimidated. I was scared, quite literally, by the amount of options that, that we have when we play chords. There seems to be infinite option, infinite number of possibilities to play a chord, which is just stressful. And what I would like to do with you guys today is talk about four colors, four options, four main chords that we'll play and we'll use a very very simple way to do that and that's the shell chord so first i want us to listen to the sound and then i'll explain exactly what's happening here and how it works and why i'm basically in love with shell chords and we'll also see later on in the video how we can expand that and create more tension and expand that to find more super awesome colors when we talk about music we really talk about tension and release. So I'd like you guys to take a second and just listen, close your eyes even, and just listen to these colors and imagine what you feel, if that makes sense. Like basically listen to this and try to describe what you feel when I play this chord. The pen is important. First of this chord. Okay, so for me, when I'm playing this chord, which is G major 7, this is a shell chord, I feel sort of a feeling of stability. Some would call it tonic home bass. When I'm playing this chord, G7, there is a lot of tension. It's important to listen and understand it because the fastest way to learn something is really integrating it within our fingers, our ears, and our mind. So, Please don't skip this part of listening and connecting the colors to the emotional place. So, major 7, home bass, dominant, and again, you can find your own words, sort of tension, we're going somewhere, minor 7, I don't want to say, but for me there is something, there is some more softness in, in it, and there's some sadness in the minor versus major, something more minor, quite literally. And again, th there is a softness that the minor 7 gives us. And then we have the diminished. The darkness. Question. If I were to start a group therapy, ah, uh, I mean group guitar session, with five to six guitar players, would you be interested in this? If you would, please drop a comment, say, yes, guitar. And if there are enough people, I might do it. Thank you. Okay, so these are the four colors. Listen to them one more time really quickly and try to see if you can hear just the colors. Dominant, minor seven, and diminished. These four colors, these couple of shape will basically give us the foundation to play almost anything. Something that is super important when you're working on these chords, please try not to test yourself. Just try to take your time and learn the information. Try to listen to the colors and try to, you know, assimilate and feel the, these chords and how they feel instead of testing yourself super quickly. In other words, practice and not test yourself. <laughs> if you're feeling this video and, and like to support the best way to do it is probably by uh, dropping a comment maybe hitting the like button and if you're super super enthusiastic which you might be you can also check out the patreon there's a ton of pdf for this video for other videos a lot of things tracks backing tracks a lot of things thank you i'm talking about any song whether it's beatles coltrane pop rock you can really do a lot with these shell chords. This is why I think it's so, so important. And for me, it was a huge revelation because, you know, you see all these songs with a lot of slash chords and nine and 13, and honestly, you don't need that. Well, I'll put it this way. 
you can add all the extensions and it's beautiful but the song itself is just the shell chord if you just play the chords that is written if you have d slash f sharp and you just play d or d7 it's gonna really sound correctly again maybe not nuanced as the song but it's gonna give you the harmonic foundation that you need so if you're trying to learn a song and trying to work on something these shell chords are for you all right <laughs> we understand the color framework what things sound like but how does it work if we have a triad for example c c e g the triad is constructed from three notes one three five now if we're adding the seventh for example here c e g b we're getting a c major seven the most important notes in a chord are the three and the seven why is that the three gives us the information if the chord is major or minor which is a big deal the seventh gives us the information if the chord is stable more home bass or there's more tension there what we call a dominant a seven chord a dominant seven now in these two cases which I just played C major 7 and C7 we're actually dropping the 5 so the 5 is cool but it's not as cool as the 3 and the 7 so when we're playing the shell chords um, we're actually just utilizing the most important information so we're really gonna articulate the 3 and the 7 and the root the root will give us also valuable information oh I might have mentioned this before but we do have vinyls so i don't know if you checked it out but there's a lot of music here that has been recorded for you guys so if you're interested please check it out link is here thank you here we're gonna just divide it to the sixth string and the fifth string check it out really closely Important note, when I have the chord G diminished, I will also use this shape for half diminished. So I will play this shape. And also, I will use this shape for G minor 6 as a tonic. So instead of playing this G minor, if I'm indeed in G minor tonality, I might play G minor 6 using this diminished shape. I think that sounds good. So we just have a couple of shapes, right? G major 7, G7, G minor, G diminished. But it sounds so, so good. So I can play any song and just using these shapes from the fifth and sixth string. One of the ways I find super helpful is to actually try and utilize the information in a creative way. So maybe write a song. I'm just gonna take four chords. So F major seven, F minor seven, E flat major seven, and D flat major seven. Check this out, very simple. And now I'm gonna do two actions. First I'm gonna do a hammer on, so and then I'm gonna add the nine. Check this out. So what happens here, right? How do I know how to do that? I know because the shell chord is one, three, seven, and then the nine is just the G here. So I'm literally playing the shell chord and I have one finger to add something. So I choose the nine. And then I'm playing F minor, add a nine. E flat, add a nine. D flat, add a nine. The same thing I could do with other colors and other chords. I can take the G7 shape, for example, and add 13 G7 13 and you see the shell this is the shell and maybe I'll add flat 13 
maybe I'll add something else. But the point is, these shell chords are super, super strong. C7, sharp 9. C7, 9. C7, flat 9, right? The same shell here with a flat 9. So again, by knowing the shell chords, truly understanding it, singing it, listening to it, feeling it, we can really get a lot done. Check out the loop. One more thing, when you're playing these shell chords and you're playing guitar, you can always add the open strings. Now it's not gonna always work, but even if I'm just taking the major seven shape and trying to add the open string, it's gonna clash here, it's gonna be beautiful here. So you can literally just try. So sometimes I'll just take a shape try to see how it sounds with an open string, just an open E with the major 7 from the 6th string or the 5th string or both. Thanks so much for listening guys, I hope this was interesting and helpful. I do love me some shell chords and I hope, I hope you will fall in love with these shapes as well. See you guys very soon. Peace.